So my research is trying to identify why it is that some individuals progress really rapidly towards loss of cognitive impairment and other individuals do great for 15 or 20 years. The goal of identifying this is if we can figure out who those folks are and what makes them different, the folks who do better, maybe we can try to apply that for the folks who aren't doing quite as well. Really what we're hoping to do is find commonality between all of the many environmental contaminants out there that are at least somewhat linked to Parkinson's. And by doing that, we can come up with an idea of how these, these many different things that we're exposed to might elevate Parkinson's disease risk. And one way that we could affect the Parkinson's community is to actually limit exposures. Number one goal of this is come up with new therapeutic targets for Parkinson's disease. So as you know, uh, for Parkinson's disease, we really only have uh, treatments that fix symptoms of disease. You can't slow the course of disease. So we build on information that we have from the clinic, from genetics and things like that, to try to create uh, better treatments using the systems-based approaches. So what it means for uh, the field would be you know, a halt of the disease and an ultimate cure for the disease. My interest is in freezing of gait in Parkinson's disease and I'm trying to develop ways for uh, predicting why some people develop freezing of gait and why others don't so that we can develop therapies to try and treat patients before they even hopefully develop. The problem. My research focuses on understanding the uh, whys and the hows of the cognitive symptoms that occur in Parkinson's patients. So people often think of the dementia that occurs later in the disease, um, but we're uh, really interested in all of the things that emerge earlier on. So what I am doing with my uh, fellowship award is looking at individuals' brain activity while they walk with and without these interventions um, to see what brain areas are active and not, not active and what changes changes about that when you give them interventions, uh, such as these queuing interventions. Uh, the hope is that if we can understand more about why these interventions work or what brain areas particularly are active when individuals respond well to these interventions, we can potentially develop even better interventions using more modern technology. So we study genes that cause Parkinson's disease and although we know that these genes are important for many functions throughout the body, we don't know how all of these genes contribute to health and we don't know what happens when these genes are mutated and things go wrong and that cascade of events eventually leads to Parkinson's disease. So our lab is using those genes and honing in on those genes to get clues as to what causes Parkinson's disease in the greater general population. So our brain is a very expansive organ. It needs a lot of energy to function properly. And the biological form of that energy is called ATP, is produced by these tiny, tiny batteries called mitochondria. And as we get older, these batteries, they start to malfunction, and that's one of the underlying causes of neurodegenerative diseases, including Parkinson's disease. So my research focus is to understand how do batteries can function properly, and what is leading to their improper function because if we can understand that, maybe we can create um, therapies to enhance their function. I am very, very lucky in that I work with a movement disorders neurologist and I have a basic science background here. So I get to both approach Parkinson's disease from a bench to a, a translational research to a bedside approach where the patients I'm working with are the people who I want to help in the long run. And they are my motivation here for doing a lot of this work.